Hi, and welcome back to another Teach Me to Code screencast. Um, I'm going to be building a delicious clone for the next uh, several episodes. And uh, in order to do that, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to first show you how I'm setting up my Rails apps these days. So the first thing I did is I created a, a Rails app. The minus J gets rid of the prototype stuff, and the minus T gets rid of the test stuff, the test unit stuff, because I, I don't really care for it. Um, and uh, anyway, that'll get us started. Um, I have the domain freemark.us, and so that's what I'm going to be using for this application. Uh, we'll open up TextMate here and first off go to the gem file. Um, you can see here that uh, it's using MySQL. It's because I use the minus D flag there. And the first thing I'll do is I'll just uncomment this uh, development and test group. Um, there, there's some deployment uh, stuff that goes with this that works out well. And then I'm just going to add in all of the testing um, and development stuff that doesn't need to go to production. I'll just put it in this group. Um, and you'll see here that I'm setting it up with Cucumber, RSpec, Shoulda, um, Factory Girl. And uh, you'll have to excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, I've had a lot of people request uh, that combination. So I'm, I'm putting it together here. Um, I'm also adding auto test just because I like it. Um, it's kind of an immediate feedback thing for your unit tests, and uh, I think it really makes a lot of sense to use. And then we're going to add annotate models, which is something that I'll do in development, but I don't plan on doing in production. So uh, that's why I'm doing that. And then finally, um, we're going to need some authorization and authentication, so I'm just going to add the gems in for that. Um, we're going to be using device and can can, and uh, I really like those, so I'm, I'm I'm excited to see you know what we can, what we can do with those. Um, one other thing is is uh, I want to use jQuery here, which is why I use the minus J. So if you install the jQuery Rails um, gem, then it gives you a, a generator that you can use to uh, to use um, jQuery. So anyway, we'll do a bundle install and. I realized that annotate models is annotate dash models, not annotate underscore models. So anyway, we'll go ahead and do the bundle install again. Now you'll notice that this runs pretty fast. It's because I cut out all of the wait time or I sped it up. So, you know, um, this will kind of give you a feel for this and then the next part will just zoom through. And by zoom, I mean this part, this using rake, blah, blah, blah. That all took about three times as long as it took right here. But what that does is it, it gathers all the gems that you're going to use and uh, provides you a context to use them in for your application. So anyway, let's go ahead and um, open up our development uh, or our database file. And uh, we'll go ahead and... Um, it looks like everything's the way I like it, so I'm just going to leave it alone, and uh, we'll go ahead and install some of these other um, gems. And the way that you install them is you use the generators, and that puts all the files in place for them. So the first one's the cucumber generator, and I don't think I sped this one up, so we'll just have to wait for a second. And it looks like we have an error. So uh, if we go and we look, um, what we'll see here is that I didn't specify whether I wanted to use Capybara or uh, WebRat. And I'm actually going to use Capybara. So we'll go ahead and specify that. And I just realized that I don't think I included Capybara in the gem file. So let's go change that real quick. Um, yeah, it's not there. So. We'll just add a line for it. And if you want to become more familiar with Gem Bundler, there's a video for it. I'll put a link to it in the in the show notes uh, for this video. And obviously we need to do Cucumber install instead of Cucumber. <coughs> Cucumber Rails also provides a feature generator, but I never use it, so just just as an aside there. 
So there we go, it installed it. So now let's go ahead and, and install our spec. Oh, let's run the bundler first and get Copybara included, and then we can go ahead and run our spec. The reason why it ran so fast this time was because all those gems were already included. It didn't have to do anything. So uh, um, that makes things a little bit nicer. If you already have the gems installed in your system, it goes faster. And if you've already bundled them before, then that goes faster too. So we'll go ahead and we'll install, <clears throat> install our spec. And then if you want to see what other um, generators are available, you can do a Rails space G. And that will actually go and uh, um, look at the generators that are available from the gems that you've uh, included in your, your, uh, your bundler, your gem pile. So you can see that there's a, there's a device generator, there's CanCan, um, Cucumber. You can see all the ones that come with Rails. Um, <clears throat> and they're the test unit ones, but we're not using test unit here, so. In fact, I'm a little curious as to why they're even included, but anyway. Um, let's go ahead and install device, and that's our authentication system. Let's sign in, sign out, um, and sign up. And this gives us two files. One of them is the... Uh, interna inter internationalization file, excuse me. You can actually use that to change the text that device uses on its um, pages. And um, the other one is the initializer, and we'll get into that in a second. But we, we want the ability file from CanCan. And CanCan is a really simple way to manage um, permissions to your different objects. So. All right, so let's get jQuery in here real quick, and you can just Rails G jQuery install minus UI. The minus UI includes jQuery UI, which is a really nice tool set, uh, depending on what you're trying to do. It, it does like the date pickers and all that stuff. Um, and what this does is it pulls all the prototype out stuff out by the hair, and it uh, puts jQuery in. And then what it does is it rewrites the Rails.js so that it actually, when you do any of the Ajax stuff with the built-in Rails stuff, um, it uses jQuery instead. Now let's go ahead and come into here, <clears throat> and this is the device um, internationalization file. So you can change any of this text, and it will change the text that's actually used um, you know, on your sign-in, sign-out, and uh, sign-up pages. And then if you come over here, then we can set some of this stuff up. So I'm going to go ahead and change the sender here real quick uh, to do not reply. And, uh, you know, again, the, the domain, which there's nothing there right now, is uh, freemark.us. And then if we come down here and we look, you know, you can see all kinds of stuff. But, uh, you know, I'm going to leave most of the defaults in. There are a few things that I want to change. One is that uh, I want people to confirm... Uh, within a few days. I don't want it just to be hanging out there forever. So um, I changed that and then um, I also want people to be able to remain logged in but I don't want that to um, to go on forever either so I set that to two weeks um, and I want I want tokens, remember tokens to be used across browsers. Now I think a six uh, character passwords a little short so I'm gonna change that too and I'm happy with the email address validation that's there so um, I don't want it locked and I thought about the timeout but the problem with that is that um, you know it's it's a bookmarking thing and so I want people to be able to stay logged in for a while and not have to come back every 10 minutes and sign in in order to do stuff so We'll leave that alone, and um, let's see. Um, if I'm if I'm doing admin stuff, um, it went kind of fast, but I I said I said it not to uh, not to sign out from all context when you're when you're signed in, and that's because if I'm doing admin work, I want to be able to sign out without signing out of my account. So anyway, we'll go ahead and create a GitHub repository for this. Um, 
and my GitHub account is cmaxw, so you can go ahead and uh, go look for it there. It's going to be called Freemark. Uh, it's F-R-E-E-M-A-R-K, and uh, we'll put a little description in here. And um, anyway, it's going to be a public repository, so you know you're all you know perfectly welcome to go and and check it out. Uh, we'll just have to uh, we'll have to copy the lines that that push the code in. I I can come up with them on my own, but it's way simpler just to copy and paste them since GitHub comes up with them. So, and it's not these lines; it's it's the remote add lines that are below it. So we'll we'll go ahead and add it to the repository. So instead of git push, we need git push origin master. And I think that'll actually set it up to track, so I think it'll it'll do everything we wanted to do with it. New Relic is the leading provider of application performance management tools for Ruby and Java applications. Thousands of companies use New Relic RPM to monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize applications deployed either in the cloud or in dedicated hosting environments. RPM Lite is free, fully supported, unlimited time version available at www.newrelic.com. All the leading Rails companies use New Relic, including 37 Signals, AT&T Interactive, Shopify, Our Stage, IGN, and lots more. This episode is sponsored by Jumpstart Lab. Jumpstart Lab offers private and corporate training in Ruby, Rails, and related technologies. They're experienced educators, not just good developers, and will get you going quickly. Courses can be scheduled in the U.S. or around the world and curriculum customized to meet your needs. Learn more at jumpstartlab.com. That was wonderful. Bravo. I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, it though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away. Hey, boo. Boo. 